Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into the channel. I want to give you an update. I've been working on this building, which is eventually going to be my YouTube studio and all the things I do weather from. Maybe you just stumbled upon this channel. I am a meteorologist and I'm building a garage and I'm going to give you the three part steps here. Uh, this is going to be part one of building the storm shelter. You see that behind me. I have to give big thanks to Carlos Maldonado and you can find him. He's a licensed ICF distributor for Nudura, which is the product I'm using here. And you can find his YouTube page. He is BC3 ICF and also uh, Big Money Carlos. Again, big thanks to Carlos for this. I couldn't have done it without him. Again, I was looking at perhaps doing cinder block. I've had storm shelters in the past. And uh, I found out some of them were just too small. And once you get past the concept of the above ground storm shelter issue that some people have, some people are like, I'd rather be on the ground. But uh, this one here is gonna be good for winds up to 250 miles an hour at least. It's rated with the FEMA door and it's all to code. And uh, it's got the 320 door on it. And again, when it comes to building storm shelters, there's three real critical uh, things you need to be aware of. One is the foundation, the footing that this is going in. We've got rebar in this every eight inches, and I'm gonna show you more of this, this ICF product. Basically, it's insulated concrete foam. Basically, you're gonna have, this, this is what it is. You're looking, it comes shipped, you know, for shipping this way, and then you look at this, and it's got the uh, webbing in here, and you're gonna alternate the rebar. And you can, I'm not gonna tell you how to do ICF. That's, I'm just a meteorologist building the storm shelter here. Again, I would find someone, <clears throat> a page who talks more specifically about ICF. I'm just gonna show you kind of the steps here. But this, I will tell you some things though. Uh, the, the, this actually forms the form here and it stays in place. So it's about 12 inches wide. So whatever room you're considering, you may wanna add a foot to each of your dimensions. But they put the rebar in here vertically and then horizontally. And here's basically the steps we went through. Well, like with any big project, it all really begins with the foundation. And I do the slope of my backyard. I had to go with this uh, stem wall footer, kind of step it down. Uh, we went about three, four courses high on the block, really reinforced it well with plenty of rebar in there. And you can see as we go to the photos here, one important step here that, you know, I thought I'd skip is actually these orange caps you put on the rebar. I can't tell you how many times um, I almost slipped in the construction site with that. But again, plenty of rebar in there. And again, according to code, had it inspected and everything. And uh, we poured the concrete, actually were able to back the truck up. I did all the footers myself and I, I like to find any way I can save money and by doing things myself, because I usually add on and reinforce the project. Uh, a few questions on why we staggered the block this way. Uh, I was told it's going to be easier to fill, backfill, when we filled all the block back in. And in the end, it's it's got a lot of support on top, and the rebar is all tied together. If this was going to go any higher, I would have, uh, uh, course, adjusted the course uh, of the blocks. But again, we're going to pour that slab on top of this. Went with the storm shelter. You can see how we dug out all the way down uh, to the solid earth here. Uh, plenty of concrete, more rebar in here as well. Uh, again, that's one of the things that I can't emphasize enough is lots and lots of rebar throughout this whole project. Uh, went ahead and poured this footer separate again and then decided to go ahead and pour everything the slab and that again it went on top of the other footer so this is a, the concrete underneath the storm shelter in some areas is about four feet thick and about two feet wide uh, there's my son use that vibrator that big vibrator there how it really helps and you don't realize how much concrete uh, you may leave air gaps in there until you use one of these things especially when you've got these deep footers out there and overall had good weather throughout this whole project until we were about to pour and that's when we had uh, more rain out there but a lot of gravel in here as well I use number 57 gravel and it usually compacts pretty well again i backfilled this area under the storm shelter again used a local rental company uh, for that and then i had someone volunteer some of their equipment for me as well I use this uh compact vibrate plate 
um, to tamp everything down. Basically did four inch lifts, but a lot of people, they say, you know, uh, that stuff kind of compacts itself, that number 57 rock. Uh, some of the rocks a little different. Here's the rebar cutter I used, borrowed that from a friend, and boy, it was a helpful tool. That's all number five rebar. And uh, here's Carlos out here helping, kind of lining things up with the ICF forms before we made the actual pour to make sure all the rebar was going to be in the right spot. Again, this rebar, every eight inches, uh, vertically and then every eight inches uh, horizontally and then there's son drake helping out i used uh, those red little things there those are the chairs i uh, found those online and they really help i used some of the chairs from a local big box store and they just were crushed by this number five uh, rebar uh, there's the pour uh, it's not quite finished there but you can see we kind of went up to the top of the cinder block there uh, keeping those caps on the rebar and here they are finishing the concrete. So we did all this in one big monolithic pour. We've got the stem wall slab stepping down, but then I've got plenty of rebar to where it all kind of goes out in the end. Okay, thanks for tuning in. This has been part one of, I'm gonna either go three or four parts on this, depending on uh, where it takes me, of course. Uh, but again, the, the, the finishing job here turned out really well. Uh, coming up, we're going to talk about this new Dura uh, ICF. This, again, is about 12 inches thick here. You get about six inches in between with the concrete. Uh, there's Carlos and his son uh, kind of starting the process here. And the first course is usually the most difficult course. But again, coming up in part two, uh, we're going to see Carlos put all these pieces together. And then we're going to talk about pouring the shelter as well. Again, it's all one uniform pour. So again, that'll be up, coming up on part two of the ICF Storm Shelter build in the new garage.